around walking on the famous Ammonite pavement on the Jurassic Coast. This is a world famous site, it's an Ammonite graveyard. Almost every single thing you see here, at least the fossils, is an Ammonite, which is pretty neat. You imagine that all these Ammonites must have been teeming with life in the Jurassic seas. You've got all these Ammonites, once they've died, they've drifted to the bottom of the seabed where they've been buried together over millions of years, 200 million years later, and you have them all preserved together in this mass death assembly. Pretty spectacular. And look how big this is. I'll show you a couple of the specimens. Walking across here, there's a lot of these shapes. And for the, so the untrained eye, you can think, what are they? Are they a fossil? Is it just some weird impression? Is it due to erosion? Well, if you take a close look at this, there's some sort of outline here. The perfect example is right at the side of it. It's another ammonite, but it's been partially eroded away. And you can see that it's left behind the same trace. So now walking across this ammonite graveyard, you can see that all these weird traces are actually where an ammonite once was, but unfortunately the seas eroded them away. Even cooler though, if you come in close and take a look, you've got preserved right in here. So a tiny star-shaped thing, which is a crinoid, a fossilized sea lily. Now, of course, they're not really lilies, they're not plants. Crinoids are part of the group called canidermes, so they're related to brittle stars and starfish. And this is just a cross-section of one of them. You've got a little bit of an arm as well there. Another cross-section here, scattered all across the seabed. Walking along here as well, I picked up this piece just to show the variety of things. Again, very water-worn, but lots of tiny ammonites in there. Here's another really good one. You've got a nice big ammonite. Obviously got it preserved here on the outside. You can see, you still see some of the ribbon, even though it's been eroded away. But interestingly, you do have some of the centre preserved, which is good. But aside from the ammonite, you do have some nice Nice bivalves preserved. Some griffe here, devil's, devil's toenails. So that's pretty pretty cool. All sorts of other shelly stuff. And then another bivalve, different species, little brachiopod as well, and more crinoid stuff. I can learn so much. This is by far one of the best layers, although it is very eroded. There are lots and lots of ammonites. I've lost count already. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands and thousands here, possibly millions if you can include all of the, the tiny ones. But come take a close look at these. Look at that, how it's worn through. So you basically get like a cross section of all of them. But just imagine that all of these are, are ammonites. You've got tiny bivalve shells here. So much material. Look at that, all those circular objects there you can see are all ammonites. Vary in size dramatically. Look at this big one. Foot there for scale. So many. also eroded away by the sea, which eventually all this material will get lost to the sea. The sea claims all, <laughs> especially down here, which is why, you know, this is why you get so many people out to come and see this stuff whilst it is still here. You know, I've seen this Almanite graveyard on documentaries over the years. I recall David Attenborough presenting a couple of different shows where he's down here talking about the graveyard. But just look at it, ammonite after ammonite. And as I say, there's bivalves in here as well. I imagine there must be some vertebrae or something, ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs must have been found in here. Look at that one, that one's quite nice. There's just so much, so much of it. Placed in a context there with the, with the cliffs in the background.
feel like I'm just going to stumble upon some skull sticking out of me. <laughs> it's going to be a plesiosaur skull or an ichthyosaur skull. If there is, I'll probably drop the camera. Yeah, here you go, so it becomes sort of less ammonites here. I'm going to pan back around to that one. That looks very nice, look at that. Rolled it away, of course, but still really nice. But yeah, you lose the sort of accumulations of ammonites in certain sections, and you just get lots of bits and pieces, little bivalve shells. But can you imagine what this must have been like, all deposited together? Well, as they died, either, you know, one by one and hit the seabed, and then eventually covered over, buried and fossilized, or perhaps there was some mass death assemblage. Maybe it was a giant tsunami or storm or something like that that led to the death of all these animals. I think I favor that. <laughs> Few colleagues of mine from the Natural History Museum a few years ago there was a major storm here in Lyme Regis and it had ripped up large parts of the greystone so my colleagues have come down to actually collect some of it to preserve it because nobody collects this stuff it's a it's a protected site so it's there for other people to come come along learn from and educate themselves and of course for the paleontologists and local collectors who can take people out as well and, and teach them. This is the area that's been lifted as a result all the dark area has been exposed over the last few days. You can see now that underneath these ledges, this is all going to be lost once the tides come back in. And this is an example of some of the slabs that are available to us. This one is about two meters wide by about a meter. Uh, this one has been turned over. These are some smaller pieces. That's probably less than a meter square. And all around the edges are pieces, generally speaking, then no more than about two meters. There's one of the larger ones. This is one of the last surviving sections of the Ammonite graveyard where the Ammonites preserved really, really well. You can see just behind me these three here, you can see the ribbon and perhaps even the keel on a couple of the Ammonites. I'm not going to get any closer because you can see just around you've got lots of big chunks of rock that have fallen down from the, from the cliffs above. So you've got to be very, very careful. Remember that when you're out fossil collecting. But take a close look at this. I'll step over these. This is a, a water-worn section again, very, very eroded. Nice salmon out there, there's a good big one here. See so how this has been really eroded in comparison to the, to the bed above? Because bearing in mind, I mean, this is all one big continuous layer, but this hasn't been eroded as much because it's right at the base of the cliffs. But right behind me, it's very, very good. Good ammonites. This one is particularly impressive because you've got the ribbing here. You can see where the center is all eroded away anyway. And then you've got this section where it's exposing the individual sutures of the ammonite. Take a look at that one. It's very nice. I always find it amazing though to think that we are now I'm sat kneeling, kneeling away next to a Jurassic seabed. You know, these animals were swimming around 200 million years ago. Mind blowing, right?